course, this conference is our largest ever thought leadership conference. Uh, we're congratulating the Be Inspired winners. The most significant here for me is where, when we say BIM advancements, and that those advancements include our, our users' innovations and how they apply things, uh, we, we see new workflows uh, in particular. You know, this is for Bentley Systems, the year of open roads, if you like. So to use the roadway example, as we say, uh, reality modeling going mainstream so that uh, uh, on the one hand, uh, every project uh, starts with the as continuously surveyed context from UAVs or, or cameras and now laser scanning as well. That's our uh, innovation here is that our context capture software can, can take hybrid inputs from scanners as well as uh, photographs and process a reality mesh to be the engineering. So it's the notion of uh, conceptioneering, constructioneering, inspectioneering. These don't describe software capabilities but rather new ways in which engineers can add value to their work. That's the way I think of it. Each of these conceptioneering, constructioneering, inspectioneering, to me, the, we call them what we do because they imply that engineers can and should do more. And on the one hand, they could enhance their work, but would enha enhance the project also. Uh, the, um, the, in each case of, of uh, conceptioneering where uh, more alternatives are explored, in constructioneering where there are fewer opportunities to introduce error and, and improve the, the quality of the process, uh, and in the case of constructioneering, we in TopCon have made that easy through the connections between our respective cloud services, their magnet and our project-wise. Uh, and then with inspectioneering to introduce the engineer into the opportunity to work with uh, continuous surveys in an engineering ready format. Uh, it's all new opportunities, uh, even commercial opportunities for, for engineers. When we talk about construction, and construction, of course, has moved on to begin from 3D modeling, but the problem is it often does begin from 3D modeling, and the constructors create a different 3D model uh, from the one that the engineers have already produced in design. And then there's no chance for the design modeling and the intelligence it can embed from analytical modeling to be used in turn during operations because the as-constructed model won't be the same. Constructioneering breakthrough so that those models are the same and are shared and done so very advantageously. Uh, and by the way, in constructioneering, the as constructed model goes back to the engineers. The digital engineering models should be at the center to, to be the key to making sense of what's observed in IT and OT is now immediately practical because the, the digital engineering model has been updated through inspectioneering to exactly what was constructed. So put, put it all together and you have the opportunity, if you were to ask me about adoption of these innovations, for the engineering profession to go for it, become more valuable across the whole scope and enable owners to, who, who probably won't figure out these innovations individually, it can be the opportunity for engineers to be the driver uh, for improving the digitalization, the going digital of the, uh, of the capital delivery process generally. It's, it's a McKinsey report that shows technology industries are at the top, are green, are digitized. The construction on almost every metric is, uh, is in the red and is slow in going digital. There are always going to be engineers. If, if engineers carry forward these innovations, if, if they say, we always work in a geo-coordinated environment, there will always be a geo-coordinated 3D model in the way that surveying is now done, in the way that engineering is done, of course, uh, and also in the way that assets are 
managed and operated in that case because the reality modeling capabilities, the continuous surveying, the context capture software can always provide ready model during operations, whereas that would have been the constraint before. If, if engineers undertake to offer this greater scope of services, and they might because they're, uh, they're not satisfied, nor should they be, with selling their hours only, uh, then we could have the going digital index uh, change toward the green <laughs> uh, quick, quicker than otherwise. I, I don't think owners are going to be uh, sufficiently aware of the potential uh, as, as, we can as we can have the engineers be in, in closing this gap. And I believe that each of conceptioneering for a better economic solution, a better environmental solution as well, and constructioneering for a better quality of solution from the design to the construction and inspectioneering for bringing engineering quality uh, work uh, to inspections. Those are not by rights hard to sell. Uh, it depends only on the ambitions of engineers. So the remaining ingredient to go in digital construction from red to green is for the engineer to be aware and motivated and able and that requires you know upskilling the people and processes to correspond with what is available in the technology so is otherwise a gap. I wish there would be a hardware advance uh, <laughs> that could close that gap but physics seems to be slowly allowing an improvement there. Wouldn't that be a great uh, innovation, so much of the cost of projects having to do with uh, risk uh, relating to existing underground utilities. Uh, we, we do a lot with software to model and represent uh, underground utilities and our underground utilities engineering capabilities are incorporated in the new Open Roads Designer, but the veracity of the data or the sufficiency of the data is the uh, obstacle there. Uh, certainly whenever anyone opens a trench, they should take photos. Uh, that's all it would take to, uh, to incrementally improve, improve that. Uh, but there doesn't yet exist the uh, ground penetrating scanner that would uh, make it as simple as above the ground. <laughs>